Okay, it looks it works. <laughs> Sorry for the technical problems. Um, so my lecture is about um, single pore robotic uh, surgery, something new, and I hope this in the future will be uh, something standard. So these are my disclosures related to this uh, lecture. And as I always uh, trying to improve, uh, I think the key to improve is always to change. And if you see my, my technique, my videos, uh, I'm every year, every month trying to improve, trying to do something new because I'm sure that uh, when you are doing the same for many years, is you are not offering the best for your patients. So there's always a way to improve and there's always a way to do it better. So you need to uh, open your mind to the new technology, to the new, uh, um, to the new concept of surgery. We are still searching for the best approach and we don't know if uh, three ports, two ports, one port, uh, which one is better. I, I personally believe in the less invasive approach, so we choose Uniportal. But there are other kind of uh, new approaches like robotic and subsidy that are emerging, and I think we should pay attention on these kind of approaches, even though they are more difficult. The, there's a long history of uh, thoracic surgery um, um, since Jacobeus started to do these minimal invasive uh, techniques with the uh, um, old thoracoscopes in 1910. Many things changed when Giancarlo Robbiaro in 1992 uh, revolutionized the surgery, thoracic surgery, doing a minimal invasive lobectomy by using few holes. So I think this was the beginning of the revolution, and of course, as Every innovation was strongly criticized for many years. Uh, we developed the Uniportal VATS in 2010, and since then we have proved that there's no limitations. We can do everything, and we have improved for more complex cases and also to a new approaches uh, through subsafoid or um, unisurgeon. So we, 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 can, we have no limitations. We, in expert hands, we can do the most challenging uh, procedures and kind of a sleeve, tracheal, and everything. But there are some new techniques that are emerging, like robotic surgery, and the robotic surgeons, uh, they claim that uh, it's very visualization, very instrumentation, more precise, and they can do a very little digestion. These are the arguments, and I agree with, uh, with them in some parts, not in others, but the problem is that they are still need three to five incisions, which, is, uh, in my opinion, is too much, but you can do everything with a single hole. But the key point is how to reduce the postoperative pain. I think when we go through the intercostal space, we cannot avoid the intercostal nerves. So there is a new way to do with this subsequent approach described in 2014 by our colleague uh, from Taiwan. And we started to do this approach a few years ago. And as you know, in Shanghai, we have a lot of experience with this technique. But the, the technique is not easy. The instrumentation through the subsequent is not easy. Uh, you need to be experienced with Uniportal. But there are some, several advantages of this approach because the pain is less. Uh, we, have, uh, we can approach both cavities, and I think um, uh, it's ideal for thymectomy, in my opinion. Maybe for lobectomy it's not easy, so it um, could be one of the limitations. But for thymectomy, I think this is the most radical approach. You can do complete um, lymph uh, sorry, thymectomy uh, approach in both sides uh, with no limitations. And you can do also bilateral resections. But Subsifoid is not easy technique. You have difficult access to the posterior anatomy. It's not easy to do a lymph node dissection. The bleeding control is, is very difficult. And you have to select the patients. You cannot do all the patients uh, by the subsifoid, especially the obese patients are very difficult, very challenging, or patients with cardiomegaly or previous operations. So it's a limited technique. It's not for every patient. As you see, the view we have for the subside for the uh, lymph node dissection is not easy, especially uh, very limited for the uh, subcarinal uh, radical complete lymph node dissection. It's quite challenging. So you have to be very experienced with this. And if we look into the left lower lobectomy or left side, uh, I think uh, this approach is very challenging and, and not, not good. You can see it's a long distance. We have to bypass the heart to reach the left lower lobe. So it's quite difficult, and in my opinion, it's not a good approach for uh, left side. Uh, we can do it, but it's not a good technique, in my opinion. So what is the next step? We are still searching for the less invasive approach, of course. Everybody's dreaming about uh, the most technological uh, aspect, uh, doing a sub for doing a non-existent technique, uh, more technologic, no, even no holes. So we are all searching for uh, ideal approach. 
that uh, could be something uh, like this. Um, very precise, uh, easy removal of the specimen, no incision, single access. But I think uh, this is a time fiction and we are very far, far away to see this kind of uh, surgery. Jesus Christ, that thing's real! So if we think about the evolution, uh, what about combining robotics with subsafoid? Maybe this could be is when robotics makes sense and when subsafoid makes sense, when we combine together, because we can reduce everything through a single hole and we can reduce the possibility of pain. So this is uh, the, the system we were working on uh, to develop for thoracic surgery. Um, we have to uh, say that this is still a, uh, experimental and we just approved for lobectomy and thymectomy in the, cadaveric, in the cadaveric model because it's not still approved for the FDA. Um, since we are working on this for several years, I, I, I was thinking that for this meeting, I can show the, some lobectomies in patients, but still we are waiting, maybe very soon we will do. Anyway, I just want to show you how it works in the cadaveric model. The system is composed by a single arm, 2.5 centimeter uh, trocar that displays three arms and one camera, which is angulated. We can control everything with the same console as we have with the conventional Da Vinci system. Um, this is the, the, the trocar, it's a single trocar with four ports, and it's a single arm, and we can exchange the instruments. We can put different kind of instruments like hook cautery or bipolar scissors or uh, ultrasound energy. The surgeon is sitting in the console, so it's the same system as uh, for a conventional robot. And we published the initial experience uh, last year uh, showing the sub and subcostal approach. So we believe that the subcostal approach is better because, or the sub because we can have um, less pain, of course, and because the system works in a snake. So we can approach the, the um, thoracic cavity without uh, compromising the, the heart. Uh, this is the position of the patient, normally semi, semi supine position. This is one additional trocar we use just to record what happened from outside. This is for our recording, it's not, it's not needed. And the, um, this is the subcostal because we, after several attempts, we show that we saw that the, the use of the subcostal could be even more convenient than the subsafe for it, especially on the left side. So um, we shift from subsifoid to subcostal, and then we use like uh, this kind of wound protector, and we adapt this kind of um, uh, system. It's called jail, jail point system, and then uh, through this um, system we can introduce a trocar. It's a 2.5 centimeter trocar plus an additional trocar just for the staplers because uh, the, the first system we, we have not developed the staplers yet, so they are coming, but uh, is the beginning. Uh, the, the, the benefit of using this kind of gel point system is, is that we can insufflate CO2. So uh, for, um, I think it's very important, uh, at least in the first cases, to use the CO2 because we uh, put down the diaphragm and we increase the space. For thymectomy, we place the patient in the supine position and use the same system. So if we measure the size of the incision, it's about four centimeter incision because it's 2.5 plus one centimeter of the trocar. So the trocar, sh uh, the, uh, the staples should be inserted by the assistant in a parallel trocar. So what are the potential advantages of this system? I think it's comfortable with the surgeon because the surgeon is sitting in the console. And I think the 3D view is uh, very useful. And I, well, all the benefits of the robotic surgery are, are included with the benefit of a single incision and subsifoid with less pain. But we have some limitations. Of course, it's not an easy approach for multi-portal surgeons. I think it's very important to be experienced with uniportal or subsifoid. Um, we are still learning how to coordinate even more. Uh, the first cases we did were uh, pretty good, but I think we need to improve. It will be difficult in obese patients. I think the bleeding control will be not easy because through the subsifoid um, is not easy. Uh, the exposure of the subcarinal and paratracheal space is much better than the subsifoid baths. Uh, and I think the cost will be an important issue at the beginning, but I think that it's a matter of time, like any kind of technology will be improved. This is the first generation, and I'm very happy with the results for the first generation. 
So this is the right upper lobectomy. You can see the, the view uh, you have uh, for, the, for the artery, for the vein. So thanks to the angulation of the, of the arms, we can uh, have a very good view and a very good instrumentation. For the left lower lobectomy, we have a much better exposure than subsiphoid because the, the, the system in a snake bypass the heart. So uh, we need to wait for the results in the patient. In the cadaver, we have no heart beating, so, but, uh, but the results we, we found are, are very good. And there's some experimental um, uh, clip applier with more angulation for the clips, and I think it's very, very useful. So you can see the difference. Uh, this is the, the view of the paratracheal space through subsiphoid bats, and here down is the view for the paratracheal space through the robot. So it's much better. You can see the, the difference on the view because we can angulate the camera. So I think it's a good improvement. And this is the station seven on the left side, which is really, really uh, limited by the uniportal as well as the uh, left side, and you can see the image on the on the on the on the robot. You can see how well we can expose the, the subcardinal space on the left side, on the right side, which is very, very difficult to reach through the subside for bats. You can see here we can expose clearly. This is the left main bronchus completely exposed on the right side. So I think it's very difficult to find this, to get this exposure with the subside for bats, but you can, we can do with the robot. And just, I cannot show too much because I have limitations, but I just show you a, a short clip about the left upper lobectomy and how it works for the left upper lobe. So you can see this is the left upper lobe vein, this is the artery for the upper lobe, and just show you that it's very important the assistant should be experienced with the staplers. This is one of the limitations now, in my opinion, but I think it's a matter of time to uh, include the uh, staplers on the, on the robot. And I think uh, very soon we will see it. Uh, we have a lot of instruments, uh, new instruments also. Um, this is the dissection of the bronchus. This is a fistula lobectomy on the left side, but you can see that the exposure is pretty, pretty good. I think I'm, I'm really satisfied with the exposure. Everything is about learning curve with the instruments. And also we can have exposure of the station seven on the left side, which is very difficult in the subset for bats. And you can see uh, fourth thymectomy, this is the innominate vein, the trachea, so we can access the both sides. I think it's the best approach. The system is ready now, it's perfect for thymectomy. I think we need to improve for lobectomy. So in conclusion, we can say that we cannot slow down. Uh, technology is helping us to do it better and better. And with the future development of robotic staplers, robotic suction, maybe narrow, narrow instruments, maybe with the use of wireless camera, wireless graspers, in combination with this single poor robot, everything will be uh, even better. Now we have developed this in Shanghai, and we are moving these raspers for VATS. So we can say that the cases performed in the cadaver lab were very, very interesting. Uh, we need to improve coordination with the arms. I think the, the visualization is much better than the subsafe for VATS. Um, the procedure is much easier than the subsafe for VATS. Uh, so I think it will be uh, one of the benefits of the technique, but we need to do it in the cadaver, uh, in the patients, and I think very soon we will do uh, in Shanghai, and I will invite you to come to our training course, and I hope very soon we will show it. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Uh,